further ado, since uh, Joe has already read the disclaimer that an executive session was held prior to this, uh, I will uh, introduce our uh, Chair of Public Works, the uh, inimitable uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. And I might add, well co-opted. Oh, well, that's, yes. <laughs> yes, and, what a and tie. Dressed for the occasion. What a tie. <laughs> okay, I need to get this to open up a little bit. Give me a second. The agenda is uh, balking at, at opening up. I'm sorry. And Brad, Brad has given you one hour max to complete the public works meeting. <laughs> <laughs> He better give me an extra amount of his hour. <laughs> I'll tell you what, of my hour, I'll give you 58 minutes. How's that? That's, that may be needed. Sorry, guys. Okay. Here we go. I uh, Welcome, community. Sorry for the slight technical delay. Um, welcome to tonight's... Uh, August 5th public works meeting. Uh, item number one, report of public works department. Receipt of the July 2020 highway department report. Before I, I ask for that to be approved, just a few comments. Um, as you know, we've been experiencing extensive uh, stormwater challenges. I included in that is watershed and flood, both protection and prevention. Uh, some kudos to our public works department in particular to Mr. Uh, Clue and Boyle, to basically an incredible team effort, everybody coming in and trying to, um, trying to intervene at a time when uh, we had a severe and really uncontrollable storm event. So just an acknowledgement of all the extra work, uh, all the extra hours in that first set of storms, and then in anticipation of this week's recent storm, a uh, significant amount of time was spent reviewing all the potential areas where there could be a continuing problem. So again, thank you both for the preventative measures and for all the protection that you provided as well as uh, emergency management, the police, the fire in particular, with the rescues and things that had to take place. So just an acknowledgement, Chris, to you and the whole team and to all the departments that, uh, that participated and contributed. Yeah, Chris, thank you very much. Mike Fleming, thank you. Okay, um, I move that, uh, are there any questions or comments on the highway department report? Move that that be accepted. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item B, receipt of the June 2020 Refuse and Recycling Department. Um, are there any questions or comments from the board? I move that that be accepted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item C, receipt of the July uh, 2020 Parks Maintenance Department report. Here comes a little editorial. Again, the, um, the routine and special uh, collection and efforts by the Parks Department um, for all these significant weather events. Just an acknowledgement for all the folks who uh, both participated with Highway and then also spend time, you know, going through and looking at things like Ogun's Park, which sustained major damage. Um, they cleared both Tokeny Creek Parkway and Wall Park and enabled it to be utilized for recreational purposes. So just a big acknowledgement across the board for the Parks Department as well that was contributing uh, to trying to get all these things under control in an event that frankly, um, it's almost impossible to prepare for that much rain in that short a, a time. So uh, uh, just an acknowledgement. Um, Mr. Chairman, I just have a comment if I may and a question yeah. for Mr. Cluel. Um, well, when when Public Works uh, was not clearing storm drains and cleaning up debris, they also were responding to um, reports of uh, uh, dead fish, dead minnows in the creek in Grove Park. And um, I want to thank Chris and his team for uh, promptly going out to Grove Park and Glenside and inspecting the creek, walking the creek to determine uh, if there was a reason for uh, for the fish kill in that um, in that creek, and and luckily uh, everything 
uh, that Chris and his team reported was that it may have been the heat, it may have been some other reasons, but it did not appear to be any um, improper dumping or chemicals or anything like that. So I want to thank Chris for that. But um, but one thing that I just wanted to clarify for the public, and I think it's important to be in the record, is when someone does um, witness a fish kill or um, or illegal dumping in, in the creek, what should they do? And that's something that um, Chris helped me with, certainly, and I disseminated it around Glenside, but I think it's important to have the information out there. So, Chris, would you would you just sort of lay out some of the steps that folks should do in case they run into something like that? Sure. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. So, in the past, uh, myself and the highway superintendent, uh, Robert Coyle, we worked with the DEP and the PA uh, Fish and Boat Commission. And being that most of them are dispatched out of, you know, Harrisburg, Norristown, Philadelphia, the response time to get to the township is way delayed compared to what we can do is we're right here in the township. So what I would prefer as being the first point of contact was would be to call the Public Works Department, get a hold of, uh, you know, our dispatch, which is our uh, secretaries at the office. They'll get a hold of myself, the highway superintendent. We come right out within minutes of the call start investigating right away, checking the culverts, checking the streams, look for discoloration, try to find out what's, uh, you know, what's going on. Within a few minutes, we know uh, we can usually locate the, you know, where it's coming from. If not, that's when we're calling in the DEP Fish Commission to get them a little, you know, people are more educated, knowledgeable, and investigating. But I would say 99% of the time, we found out what the issue was within 30 minutes of the initial call way before DEP showed up in the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. We document the pictures, share all the evidence with them, and then they take it over from there and then issue fine citations or warnings, however they feel it's necessary. So to be clear, we want the public works to be called first. Don't call the uh, Fish and Boat Commission or DEP and think that's good enough. That's 45 minutes. We can prevent it by putting booms in the creek, mats, stuff like that to contain it. So we want the call first but you're more than welcome to call people outside that, but call us first. Yeah, that's great. Obviously time is of the essence in these, in these issues. So uh, Chris was on the spot. So thank you for that. And I think it's important information for everybody to know. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Orman. Any other uh, comments or input for the, um, for the parks <coughs> maintenance department report? Move that it be accepted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item 1D, receipt of the July 2020 Code Administrator Report. Any comments uh, or questions from the board? I move that those be accepted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item 1E, receipt of the July 2020 <coughs> Street and Traffic Light Superintendent Report. Again, I, I want to take the time to just do a little bit of editorializing. Um, there's a four-page report from our uh, street traffic and light person, Joe Stucker, um, that talks about street light repairs, traffic signal repairs, and work resulted um, from public notifications. So just a kudos and an acknowledgement to, to you, Joe, for being detailed, documenting, and more importantly, delivering the fixes whenever you can, uh, whenever you're notified. So I just would like that to to be noted um, because these are things sometimes people take for granted or don't realize are all part of this process um, in, in uh, public works to be able to maintain things in adverse situations and get things done. So just an acknowledgement. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Um, I move that uh, those minutes, the report be accepted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Item two, report of the township engineer. Um, so Mr. Eisold, I, item 2A, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution <clears throat> approving the sewage facilities planning module for the Wawa land development located on Easton Road and Waverly Road. There is attached documentation. Uh, Mr. Eisold, would you care to comment on this? Sure. Uh, before you uh, this evening is the resolution uh, as you spoke of. Uh, this uh, full planning module packet was submitted to the township recently. Um, Matt uh, Krobzinski from my office who uh, deals with the sewer, uh, sanitary sewer matters, uh, has reviewed it and uh, has found all to be in order. 
Um, the adoption of this resolution would then be included uh, with the packet, uh, along with some other uh, approvals from other agencies, and that would be submitted to the DEP for their ultimate uh, review and approval. Uh, this is for the, uh, the proposed, obviously, Wawa uh, facility on uh, Easton Road, and um, it's in a position at this point uh, to move the planning module forward. Um, I, I accept the, I expect there will be comments from the board and Commissioner Armin since it's in your domain. Uh, yes, my domain. Uh, so uh, um, the, the uh, Mr. Oz, I just nice have to, to make fun of the chairman. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, I just have a question. If you look at yes. the project narrative. Yes. Um, it, it looks like in several places it talks about six EDUs, but if you look underneath and maybe maybe I'm just misunderstanding under the alternative sewage disposal investigation in the first line at the end it it, it says five EDUs I'm not sure if that's a typo or if I'm misreading that and I saw yeah, somewhere I, three EDUs so yeah, I think, while I you're think at that, it answer to the whole thing yeah I believe that uh, yeah I think that should have been a six if you look at it in the parentheses is the backup information that's right. for that number. So yes, you're correct, uh, uh, Mr. Armin. That's uh, Commissioner Armin, that should be a six. Okay. Does that um, represent uh, that th those would be additional ADOs over what was originally approved for that location and that may be part of the discrepancy? No, actually it's the opposite. Um, it looks like there were, um, I believe, more EDUs uh, available. There was actually a, a total of uh, of the existing facilities were a total of 2,082 uh, gallons per day, whereas the utilization for Wawa was only 1,302 gallons per day. So there's actually between the facilities, the office building and the uh, car wash and the, uh, the Luke Oil, and I believe there was one other property in there, uh, maybe it was a residential or some kind of a, a building, um, they're actually utilizing less than what was on those combined sites previously. And, and Mr. Eisel, that actually brings me to my next question. When you look yes. at the estimate of average daily water usage, yes, um, the, the 1302 is based on, um, as I understand it, water usage at another Wawa location that is slightly larger at 5,585 square feet. Um, and, and what, it, see, it appears has been done is they took the water usage for that 55, 85 square foot facility, which is 1,440 Four. gallons per day. Correct. And then sort of prorated it for a 500 square foot lesser Less. facility, yes. right? Yes. So, they used empirical data from, a, from a, a similarly, but slightly larger store. Correct. Okay. Um, yes. But, but I, I just, um, you know, I, I don't really know how it works, but um, it just seems to me that a Wawa um, that's maybe 500 square foot larger is not necessarily going to use um, more water or a smaller Wawa is not going to use less water. That, that's probably like retail space or, or what have you. They're going to be um, making, you know, use utilizing the same, it seems to me, the same amount of water. But, but I don't know if yeah. this is sort of a standard procedure or, or what. Yeah, it's just sort of a, a, a method of, of calculating it. Um, you know, a bigger store, you may have, you know, I don't know, more hamburger or more hoagies are making or whatever. So it's, I mean, they're, they're not that far off from each other. So even if we'd use the 1400, that would still be obviously much less than the existing. Than the existing. Uh, but um, um, I can touch base with Matt and see, uh, but I believe that's a, a sort of a, a standard rule of thumb. Uh, okay. based on uh, commercial commercial uses. F fair enough. Um, the, yeah. the, the last question I have is, so this planning module package that we'd be approving tonight, this is only the sewer module, right? This is not the uh, entire plan that um, that you're asking us to, to vote on tonight in terms you, of, that, yeah, go ahead. That, that is correct, that is correct. It's only the sewer, sanitary sewer facilities planning uh, module that you're voting on tonight. And, and it's my understanding that the land development plan and, and the traffic plan, um, these are things that are ongoing as part of um, as part of the process. 
And in fact, um, it's my understanding that that you personally have, have met with some of the local neighbors on some of these other um, components of the project. And, uh, and if you want to update us on that, that would be great. But but in the meantime, I want to thank you for for doing that and for committing to continue to do that. Yes, thank you. And there's a uh, sort of a status update a little further back in your packet. It sort of goes over some of these these issues, um, including the planning module package. But uh, the plans have been reviewed. Uh, there was a letter that was uh, either going out today or the next day or two that contains the outstanding issues that still need to be uh, evaluated and looked at. Uh, obviously, the the list is getting smaller, but there are still a few things to be uh, to be addressed. And Mr. Oswald, um, some of those issues are issues that you discuss with the neighbors? That is true. That is okay. correct. Yes, yes, yes. Could I, could I just jump in and ask First, you Jimmy. also on that, the, yes. um, the uh, advisory committees that are usually weighing in on things like that, if they've also been brought up to date on those plans? Um, and you say brought the date, I mean, I know the plans, I know that the uh, uh, planning and zoning director did post them on the, on the, on the website. I also know that the conditional approval um, that was a conditional approval that was already uh, issued uh, included a lot of those uh, comments and issues from the various boards and agencies to be included. And that was all put together when we did this final review on what items had been addressed and what items might still be outstanding. And those are the issues, obviously, all the outstanding issues were, again, included in our latest letter, which will be coming out, if not today, maybe a, uh, probably the next day or so. Any other questions or comments from the board? Yeah, Keep actually, I, I didn't want to interrupt Matt yeah, if you ahead. still have more. No, I, I, I've, I've gotten all my questions. Thank you. Okay, um, I had one, I had that question about the EDUs as well. And then also, okay. it talked about, um, in the materials that we got, um, talked about an existing clay pipe uh, that, that the um, uh, effluent would, would uh, link into. And I'm wondering if the clay pipes are the old ones that have certain, uh, uh, you know, if, if they're the ones that are uh, cracking and problematic, I'm wondering why it wasn't just, why the plan isn't to replace it. Or again, enlighten me on what that's all about, please. Yeah, I think I think the, the, what you're referring to, that 12 inch clay pipe, is actually the sewer main in Easton Road. Uh, it's not particularly, you know, directly with this development per se. Uh, they are putting in obviously pipes um, in, on their site and connection pipes that are up to current day standards. But uh, it's, it's the existing pipe in Easton Road that runs probably, um, I, I don't know how many uh, me, uh, feet or miles or whatever, but uh, that, that's referring to the existing clay pipe in the actual Easton Road that has been in place for probably a number of years um, and uh, still, still functions apparently uh, with respect to, uh, you know, to the collecting sewage from that area. So it, it, it would not be a reasonable expectation for them to go beyond just connecting to that existing yeah no that would be that would be a, a quota sort of a, an off-site improvement and um, you know mr. Bagley can speak along those things but it's 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 over and above what they would what a developer would to typically be required to uh, provide in, in a situation uh, such as this okay and, and I'm and wondering if the if, I'm sorry as part of that question also is um, any uh, impact or connection with the redoing of the intersection there if uh, if some of that is going to need to be um, renovated uh, along with it so that was part of the you know as as you redo the intersection is any of that uh, part of yeah the I think I, I think I mean the um, the intersection will probably uh, obviously deal mostly with surface. There will be some some stormwater pipes coming off the site. There will be obviously the, the sanitary sewer lateral that connects off. Um, I don't know exactly uh, how deep that clay pipe is, but I'm guessing it's fairly deep in, in Easton Road as, as a main collection line. Uh, but um, anything that needs, obviously, if there's something as they're constructing that they, uh, you know, come across or find an issue, 
uh, we would we would obviously have them at that time address that and bring it up to standards. But uh, as of this point, I don't believe the plans show any kind of full reconstruction um, of, of the sewer in that area. No, because those Thank are you. meatballs. Oh, okay. No, no I'm not worried about that. Uh, Commissioner Rapport, is that, is that enough? I'm done. Thank you. Any other commissioners have a question? Okay. Oh, I have a couple, uh, Mr. Eisel. One is yeah. that um, uh, just to, to follow up on Commissioner Rapport's concern, um, yes. could we make a request of Aqua to actually do a camera of, of a, what is an aging part of our infrastructure, what used to be part of ours, but is an aging um, uh, ceramic line that maybe just in case there might be the chance that heavy equipment or whatever could in fact create a problem. So I think it would be, it would be important to make that request of Aqua since that is now their property. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that would be an issue. I think we could do that. Uh, I'm sure in many cases they're going to want to be uh, involved if we're anywhere near their pipes also, but I think we could go above and beyond and ask sure. them to uh, take a look a little closer at that pipe and uh, ensure maybe with the construction in that area and the road closure, it might be an appropriate time if there's any issues that they may um, decide to, to make some improvements. We can definitely well, the other The other comment I'd make is there's $1.2 million of stormwater management investment on that property. So whereas other parts of the township, we have the risk of I and I of an inflow and infiltration, I think maybe some of the additional investment that's being made on infrastructure may right. minimize some of that impact. But I think it's important that we be, you know, we be doing disclosure Proactive. And, and communicating with Aqua as well as making sure that none of those things uh, create additional stress on an already aging system. Yep. I can I can put a, a letter together and uh, to to Aqua and, and I outline the issues and have them try to uh, maybe get a jump on things to see that uh, everything's in order and, and there's no compromise of their of their system. For Great. Sure. Are there any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, can we move this to question? All those in favor of adopting the resolution? Well, can before we do that, are we going to have any comment from the public? Yeah, I was just going to interrupt myself. Yeah, any public okay. comments? Uh, Allison, do we have any public uh, requests for public comment? Yes, we have one from Rhonda. Hey, Mark Eisel, it, it's Rhonda yes. Eisel. Yes. If Hi. there's a reduction in the, this is sort of related to the Wawa, but more big picture. If there's a reduction in those EDUs at that Wawa site, will that allow for us to have those EDUs in a bank for future projects or how is that working these days? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're back and forth, uh, Matt, from my office, and I know Terry's been involved with uh, trying to get involved with the DEP to try to reclaim some of these, quote, uh, extra EDUs uh, to utilize in other locations. And uh, I'm not sure we have any uh, direct uh, guidance at this point, but we're definitely, uh, I, know, I know we're working on that from, from several fronts and trying to uh, take advantage since uh, DEP has not been uh, generous in issuing uh, any new uh, EDUs at this point, we have to. That would be an understatement, but yeah. <laughs> any, any advantages we had can to, uh, to, to keep our EDUs and use them for uh, locations, uh, future yeah, locations I, I, and so forth. Yeah, I was just curious what the status was of that. I know yeah. that they were a little- It's, it's um, in process. I don't know, for a while. It's, okay. it's in process. Okay, great, thank you. Any other public comment, uh, Allison? Okay, I'll close no. public comment. And, and ask uh, to move this to question. Okay, so then the, the what's on, the motion is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners at their full meeting that they adopt the resolution approving the sewage facility planning module for the Wawa land development. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, uh, item B. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution granting conditional approval of CTDA number 19-05 land development and lot consolidation plan of Sergio Polikov for 100 East Comley Street, Philadelphia to permit a parking lot for the adjacent vehicle repair business in the R1 residential district. Um, there is information attached. Uh, Mr. Eisel, would you care to give us some insights on that? Sure, sure. I believe the uh, applicant may be online and may want to say a few words, but uh, 
I, I can say that I did uh, do an uh, inspection, actually, I think two inspections since our last meeting to review. Um, as you may recall, we had uh, spoke about the, the, the stormwater management. There was a berm and some other things that needed to be uh, repaired and replaced, if you would. And um, I did meet on site uh, with the applicant uh, on, on two occasions at least and went through those and have confirmed that all that work uh, has been completed at this point, um, which I, uh, I believe was the last outstanding issue. Uh, but the applicant's willing to, if, if wants to say a few words, uh, is welcome to, uh, to chime in also. Is the applicant here? He was. Commissioner Brockington, that is your domain, I believe. Do you have any questions or comments? I don't. I mean, in, in the beginning, there were a lot of residents, uh, especially from Philadelphia, who were sort of against this. And and, I'm, and I apologize for any noise in the background. My lights are off, no power in my home, and I'm in my daughter's home with grandkids. So it's a little <laughs> noisier than usual, so I apologize. Um, but no, I have nothing. It seemed like everything what we were asking for, they have done. I received no um, calls or complaints from the previous um, the residents from Philly who were not happy with this, they seem like they're pretty okay with all the changes that were made. So I, I'm fine with this. And, and we also got uh, the, you know, the authorization or support for the Montgomery County Planning Commission for this. So uh, any other comments or questions from the board? Uh, I will open this up, Allison, to public comment if anybody has any questions or comments from the, the community. I do not see any. Not recognizing any? Um, so we'll close this and move to question. Uh, consider recommending the resolution granting conditional approval of the land development and lot consolidation of the property at 100 East Comley Street. Mr. Those in favor of recommending this to the full board at the August 19th meeting, say aye. 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 Okay. Item C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners grant conditional approval for CTDA number 17-04 of Penrose Medical Center to consolidate two parcels located 1829 and 1831 Cheltenham Avenue, Cheltenham to uh, permit medical offices in the two attached buildings in the R5 residential district. See attached, uh, Township Engineer Eisel. Yes, thank you. Uh Mr. Chairman, um, the, um, as you recall, this uh, project was uh, before us in the past. Um, the, um, the applicant had gone to the zoning hearing board to uh, basically combine uh, two uh, twins that were connected into a, one, a single office uh, building. I believe it's a, a, a dentist, I believe. Um, and uh, one of the requirements from the zoning hearing board was that the, uh, the applicant provide a con lot consolidation plan uh, slash land development plan to ensure that all the uh, external issues uh, were, were resolved and the lot was combined into one lot. Uh, we've been working with the applicant uh, and their engineer uh, and, and an attorney for some time, and there were a number of issues, but uh, mo the, those issues have been uh, cleared up. And uh, I believe, uh, I'm not sure if there's anyone online from the applicant uh, that may want to um, speak to this, but I, I believe all the issues uh, have been uh, resolved at this point. Yeah, hi, uh, this is uh, William Kerr. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Eisold uh, correctly characterized everything. I guess the only thing I wanted to mention, this is actually a doctor's office, not a dentist office. Doctor's, but, okay, sorry. Yeah, to doctor's sorry. office. So I think that we're, uh, but I think we're ready to go. We're, uh, I've, I've been discussing, uh, or actually had circulated to your solicitor a, uh, a deed of consolidation, so I think we're on board with that. We have the plan, so we're ready to uh, to, to wrap this up, I think. And I so, Bill, Bill, if there's a condition that that uh, lot consolidation deed be recorded within 45 days of this approval, your client has no problem with that, correct? Yeah, no, that's no problem. Um, fine. But, uh, that's fine. Mr. Chairman, question? Yes. yes. Um, uh, would it be correct that uh, the EMS, the uh, uh, Montgomery County Planning Commission, their recommendations on the parking, that that has also been complied with? In their yes, original document, it was generally supported with some conditions. So I'm wondering if they met whatever those concerns or conditions were. Yes, uh, they have. There was a requirement for a one handicap space, I believe, and yes. uh, two additional spaces. 
and and the size of of, of those uh, originally was undersized, but I believe they've adjusted uh, things and uh, they now now do meet the requirements, uh, minimum requirements for those uh, those spaces uh, at this point. Any other questions from members of the board? Is that your board, Commissioner Holland? No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I think it's Dan. Oh, it is. Okay. Brad. No, Brad. No. Uh, there he is. Okay. Flip a coin. <laughs> uh, no other questions or comments. Let's let's move to question. Uh, all those in favor of uh, recommending conditional approval to the full board, uh, say aye. 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 Item D, easier things coming along. Consider recommending Board of Commissioners award a contract for furnishing bituminous materials, FRB, plant to Glasgow Inc, Glenside BA in the amount of $24,050 from September 1, 2020 through August 31st, 2021. Uh, Mr. Engineer. Please. Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, um, as you may recall, this um, material bid uh, was put out um, for bituminous materials uh, in the spring uh, by uh, Mr. Fleming. And uh, due to the COVID and the ability not to uh, get have the meetings and go through things, uh, he asked if we could uh, provide the information on pen bid uh, so it all could be done uh, electronically, uh, which is what we did. Um, we put it all out there and received bids. Um, we did only receive one bid uh, for this um, this work from um, uh, Glasgow. Um, they were, I believe, the uh, contractor that was selected as a low bidder last year. And uh, for these uh, four <coughs> items, uh, they were obviously the only bidder, but they were uh, very close. The bids were, were very close to what they bid last year. I think there might have been an average of maybe a 5% increase in the bids. Uh, but um, and, and the time frame is a little different than normal due to the fact that we had to you know go out and pen bid and rebid it again. So it's given us a little you know, give us that year uh, so that the time frame is a little different. But other than that, uh, we would uh, Mike and I have reviewed these uh, these these numbers and uh, do recommend that the the board approve them for for as needed uh, bituminous materials for their um, public works and other projects that the, the township is involved with. Mr. Fleming, just a question: Were there any uh concerns or issues with, you know, prior year, these kinds of relationships with uh, Glasgow Inc. and that kind of thing, just making sure that we're being consistent, you know, and also still doing uh, the necessary level of, of oversight. No, uh, <clears throat> Glasgow has performed well in the past. Thank you. Mr. Um, Chairman, if I may, it's j just a quick comment. Mr. Harmon, please. Thank Thank you. Um, it, it just, uh, I just want to point out that this is a local Cheltenham company. So it's nice that we're uh, utilizing a local company that bid and, and uh, we have a successful relationship with. So they happen to be located in your domain? My domain, correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> just checking. Any, any additional or, or questions? Or Armin, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Any additional questions or comments by members of the board? I don't really feel the need to put this out to the public, but just in case, Allison, has anybody raised their hand about this one? No, they haven't. Okay. Uh, called a question about uh, authorizing the uh, contract for furniture <laughs> materials. Did we lose Commissioner? All in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay. Item E, considering recommending the Board of Commissioners award a contract for furnishing equipment at an hourly rental rate to Glasgow Inc, Glenside, Pennsylvania, from September 1, 2020 through August 31, 2021. Again, Mr. Eisel. Yes, uh, my discussion here is the same. Again, this was put out on pen bid. Um, um, we received one bid from Glasgow. Um, their numbers, uh, and I'm not sure if they won this bid last year, or I think there may have been a combination of contractors, but um, they were one of the contractors that provided uh, the low bid service last year. And uh, based on those numbers, um, I reviewed them. And again, they were very close. I think it was slightly over 5%, maybe 6% or so from last year. Um, and uh, Mike and I reviewed, the, reviewed these numbers and uh, uh, recommend that uh, the, the board award uh, the equipment hourly rate uh, work to uh, Glasgow Inc. of Glenside. A question, uh, Mr. Eisel, does this contract yes. have a ceiling amount or is it 
done on a, a as needed basis. It's an as requested basis. Yeah, I guess primarily from uh, Chris and Public Works um, as they need uh, a specific piece of equipment for a project or a maintenance or cleanup, uh, they would contact them um, and um, utilize their services uh, at this pre-specified rate. Question? Uh, please, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Pransky. Yes, I don't have a domain, I'm just... Um, you, Mark, you mentioned that this is about 6% over last year, give or take. Yeah, on average, is, yeah. Is, isn't that well above the rate of inflation? Um, my question is, what's the reason for the increase that they're asking for? Um, again, these are all just hourly rates for equipment. Um, I'm not sure what drives their rates, obviously. Uh, to some extent, I guess, the, the available equipment. Um, uh, you know, if it's new equipment or older equipment, but uh, that's, I mean, that's, that, that's where the numbers came in. Um, it, it's, it's reasonable. It's in the ballpark. I mean, you'd always want to have, you know, less <laughs> rates be decreasing, but um, that's, you know, as far as an exact explanation, you know, and it's funny because each one is a little different. Some are, some are above, above zero. So there's a few that are below zero, obviously, or below, you know, decreasing rates. But uh, overall, that was the that was the average per se. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. No, no, it's just that, you know we're we're so budget conscious. Yeah, I don't want to um, give an extra percent where we don't have to. Uh, right, Commissioner uh, Norman, along those lines, um, and Mr. Oswald, if you can't answer this, maybe Chris can. How, how often do we find ourselves utilizing equipment that that we don't have um, in, in this fashion? Just out of curiosity. So yeah. I'll answer. The, I'll answer. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and jump in and uh, try to ease the pain a little bit on that uh, question. So I think in the last, uh, I'll say five to six years, we only rented one piece of equipment from Glasgow, and that was a five-yard excavating bucket to do the compost facility because we had nobody coming to get the compost, and we heaved it up probably four stories high, and that was the only way to do it. We didn't have machinery, so. I don't think it's going to be an issue of overexpenders unless something crazy would happen. Understood. Th thank you for that. I appreciate That's exactly what I was looking for. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay. So uh, uh, let's move to question toward the contract uh, for furnishing equipment, hourly rental rate to Glasgow Inc. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, next item, report of the township manager. Uh, Receipt of committee meeting minutes, A1, Shade Tree Advisory Committee. Um, any questions or comments from the Shade Tree Advisory uh, Committee minutes? Additions, okay. Uh, move that those minutes be accepted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item uh, A2, Lamont uh, Ahar, uh, July 16th uh, meeting minutes. Any questions or comments? None taken. Move to call a question. All those in favor of accepting the review minutes, say aye. 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 Item A3, Wind Code Pahar, um, 3A. Concurrence with the issuance of a certificate of appropriateness for application W20-251 of Michael Messina and Emily B. Harsh, owner of 112 Webster Avenue, Wind Code PA, one nine zero one five nine five for the construction of a four foot high wooden split rail fence with wire mesh in the rear of their rear of their property. Any uh, uh, questions or comments? I was just trying to understand the wire mesh part. I understand the split rail fence. I could say, "Why are you asking?" But that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> I, I'm assuming if it's a, at the bottom and it's something like chicken wire, it's probably because I have a small pet, but I, I don't know. Uh, is there anybody here from either the Bahar or representing uh, um, Mr. Yeah, this is Henry Sekowongu. Yes, they do have a small pet um, and the fence, the, the wire mesh is to, to keep the dog, uh, the little pet dog inside. That's and just a wild guess. Okay. <laughs> that was in their minutes. It was, it, it talked to that thing in the, in the document. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport, for that clarification. Um, so uh, I, I'm assuming that we want to approve that. Um, 
any any additional questions or comments? Uh, I guess call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, item A4, Environmental Advisory Council. Uh, their meeting minutes. Um, the, any questions or comments or additions? Um, just one comment that their minutes link closely with the Shade Tree Advisory Committee on the Board of Commissioner revisions on the caliber replacement dimensions that we were requesting. So the, the, two, uh, the two advisory committees are working in tandem to make sure that those recommendations are you know, supported and also overseen by the board. Just a, just a comment to that. So are there any uh, questions or comments from the other members of the board? None being given. So I'll, I'll move that those minutes be accepted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now we go to old business. Buckle up. Oh, are there, I'm sorry. No, I said buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, old business, A, continued discussion on SEPTA Jenkintown stream restoration project in the Tokeny Creek watershed. Uh, point one, recommend the Board of Commissioners authorize submission, uh, I can't see my document. On. Submission of a conditional letter of map revision or CLOMAR application package to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, to revise the annotated flood insurance rate map, FR, F, uh, firm, based on updated hydraulic analysis for portions of the Tokeny Creek and Bader Run. Um, so I guess what we need to do is, uh, Commissioner Armand, do you want to take the lead on that? Uh, I will. Uh, I will attempt to do that. The um, it's, you know, th this will be the I guess the third time that we've uh, had this topic before us, um, and you know, the, so the concerns have been expressed about um, the fact that the stream restoration project um, where it is located um, sort of provided minimal, if any. Uh, um, benefit impact to Cheltenham and there was some concern that uh, we weren't really addressing uh, the entire issue. Um, so we um, have asked, um, we had asked SEPTA sort of go back and look at it again uh, to determine whether there were steps that could be taken that would have some positive impact on, um, on flooding that occurred in Cheltenham uh, itself, as opposed to sort of what we viewed potentially as um, either having no impact or having potentially negative impact. Um, and uh, it took a couple of tries, but Mr. Stefanski um, has <coughs> sit in in July and 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 since has come back with. Uh, with some thoughts and ideas and in some respect commitments to work on the SEPTA project, um, both uh, sort of upstream, in, and by that I mean uh, connecting what has traditionally been known as the Glenside DEP flood project um, with the SEPTA project. And obviously that is something that um, the, the Glenside DEP flood project is something that um, is, a, is certainly a high priority for, for many of us. Uh, and also to um, uh, work on the other sort of phases of this larger SEPTA project going downstream uh, from, from the, uh, you know, just north of the Jenkintown train station and then all the way down. Um, and those commitments uh, sort of change, uh, at least in my view, change the calculus um, and do uh, in many respects provide tangible uh, tangible improvements that I think will be a positive impact for, for Cheltenham. So um, that's why it's back here on the agenda and Mr. Stefanski's here and if he wants to elaborate, I'd be happy to turn it over to him to add any additional um, comments, and then obviously, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you're so inclined, open it up to uh, to other comment from the board and from the public. Thank you, uh, Mr. Savansky. Would you share some of that with the, the public? 
You're on mute. You're muted, Dennis. Dennis, you're muted. Okay, you're muted. Hey. I'm sure I can unmute myself. So thank you very much for the time. I greatly appreciate uh, those, those words. Yes, we've been working uh, and I appreciate the commissioner's time having different discussions, trying to find the, the, the movement to get this project uh, going forward. So one of the things that we, just to elaborate, we've been having discussions with the DEP, uh, myself, understanding what projects they need to have moving forward, um, what scope impacts the, the SEPTA portion of the project, and what we can do to uh, help, I think, facilitate and expedite some of the work uh, just north of our bridge 1122, which I guess is the most further downstream portion of the DEP project. Uh, I think, you know, we've, we've come to some good resolution trying to move that forward. And like we stated in the past, that although we're describing this first element as a phase one, not ever truly a phase project. We would like to do it all simultaneously. There's a cost saving to mobilization to SEPTA and our grant. But additionally, if we can help facilitate, whether it be in a preliminary phase or just an assistance overall to move the DEP project forward, uh, there's opportunities, in my opinion, to have cost savings on mobilization, especially uh, trying to bid contracts out simultaneously uh, and in conjunction with each other. So that, that's what I would just say to elaborate. I'm sure there's going to be more questions that we can go in detail. I don't want to occupy too much time here. Thank you, Mr. Stefanski. Uh, additional comments from members of the board? Okay. Um, I guess we should open this up to public comments since this has been something that has engaged uh, many of our residents over probably uh, the last couple of years. So, Allison. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Hislop. Good evening. <clears throat> it's Robert Hislop, 211 Harrison. And uh, let me just get situated. Sorry, I'm on here twice and I've been having trouble and I've been in my basement. There are my notes. So I'm going to just try to highlight what I've said before. I'm not sure based on what was said already, where we go. But my question re still remains, not this project, because it's encumbered as a full solution. But how can the township be assured now, before there's approval to proceed, that SEPTA, the full transportation authority, not just this project, will co-partner with the township to achieve the ultimate safety required by SEPTA. So I know there are grant limitations. I know there are property restrictions. My question is not to modify the scope of this project. We've been through those details. Uh, I'm more concerned with Mr. Stefanski's comments that no matter what he does and when he does phase one, phase two, phase three, the water will still be racing down the SEPTA tracks. And that is a tremendous risk for the uh, property that SEPTA owns for the passengers, for the uh, equipment, for the services, for liability, all kinds of things. So um, that is still going to exist. Can we ask Mr. Stefanski to respond to that before you drill down a little deeper? And in particular, Mr. Stefanski, talk about the um, the downstream, you know, things that you've you've already shared with the board to some degree. Certainly. So. One of the things that we've looked at is the, the basins on the Bader side, but some of the work that we are looking at near the SPS Technologies properties and in conjunction with the DEP. Uh, we have what I would define as an a la carte type style design that we can address certain elements throughout. There's more benefits, obviously, to working towards the upstream. So we are looking at uh, reallocating funds from the downstream elements closer to what we define as our bridge 1012, which is the culvert that was replaced a number of years ago and move some of those funds further north above the Jenkintown train station to address some of those concerns that the public has had in the past. This would impact our bridge 1122, which is just south of Reister's Mills Road. And then additionally, still impact our culvert that we were discussing and replacing and just continue to improve the basin structure that we have between the two PICO substation properties. 
So Thank does you, that change? Fansky. Does that answer your question, Mr. Hislop? I know it's not going to solve the, the big global situations. That, well, I'm wondering. To the table. Does that change the scope of this or is this project or is that an addition to this project or some of each? A little bit of each, Mr. Hislop. I think the, the concern that you've always raised is an appropriate one. The things that we've tried to look at is, again, from the definition of this project, has always been just hardening the right away and making sure, and I, I need to continue to stress that because I feel that this continues to get lost in the scope of this project. The portion of this project, by definition, issued by FEMA, or I'm sorry, the FDA, and our grant from Hurricane Sandy was to harden the septic infrastructure. So if we had a storm like we had yesterday, the railroad tracks would still be there and we'd be able to recover quickly. That is the definition of this grant. We have recognized that there's other additional improvements that we can take advantage of, such as basins, bioswales, different things like that, that we've been proposing for the number of years now. I just want to put it on record. That has always been the definition of this grant. So yes. we have notified and recognized that there's opportunities to take advantage, and that's what we're doing now. We're trying to partner with the township to facilitate the exped uh, expediting the DEP project and to introduce bioswales and drainage basins that weren't originally part of the very first presentation that we've done. So that, that's kind of what I can uh, encapsulate or summarize what the work is. Okay, and my concern, whether it's this project or in the future, is two acre feet of storage versus 41 acres feet of storage. So please, however you address it, please quantify it and bioswales aren't going to cut it and we can have an offline conversation if you like where i introduce numbers that were roughly 59,000 per per acre foot instead of 10 million per acre foot so you know uh i'm concerned with the storage and i think i think mr hislop that that's an offline discussion but okay. to your point I, I think that there has been an expanded um an expanded commitment and, and over this period of time there have been a number of things that have changed so i'd like to see if there's anybody else in the public that uh, that would like to um and, and that was my that concern comments. thank you Alice, uh, miss camarota Hi, um, this is Teresa Camarota, 1112 Church Road in Wincote. And I was curious um, how rainfall data was being collected for the project. Is that part of the, the data that you've been collecting? Yes, so we've been okay. looking at previous historical uh, summaries of uh, storms, I uh, know we compared our data to Irene as well as Sandy. So when we, not we, but when JMT, who is uh, Johnson, Miriman and Thompson engineering firm, who is SEPTIS, has our contract to perform all hydraulic analysis of this area. They've run a number of models of the property or of the, 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 uh, the stream embankment. When we completed that, we actually looked at the historical data from both Sandy and Irene and recognized that our model reflected the patterns of those two particular storms. Um, and then from there, what we've done is we've looked at, okay, if we adjust or change the stream banks, um, what impact does that have to lowering the overall 100-year storm data as it is today? And that is what this request is is notifying that what we are doing is actually not having any adverse impacts to the 100 year storm event and that is strictly what the request is right now that the township uh, sees what we are applying for that there's no adverse effect to the to the overall uh, watershed and and that's that's pretty much it thank you so uh, i would just like to respond um uh, just as a local citizen as a member of uh, a couple different groups, we do have uh, one gentleman who's been collecting data for the area um, for probably over 10 years. And he's been a great resource for us. I'm not an engineer, I don't understand all the terms that you're using, but just yesterday he clocked in 4.25 inches in Wincote, which is up uphill 
uh, at Church and Greenwood uh, from the um, train station area. On Monday, uh, July 6th, it was close to four inches that was um, came in on his data. And then five days or four days later, five days later, Friday, on the 10th, um, it came in at 3.5. So there is an enormous amount of water. And I think that as uh, we proceed with these discussions about the projects and storm water, uh, is there a consideration of looking at it in terms of 200 year as opposed to 100 year floods? So I understand your, your uh, question there. So just so everyone's aware, when we perform our analysis, we're looking at the 100 year storm flood plus one additional foot. So that is what our analysis uh, considers as we move forward on our projects. As in uh, terms, go ahead. in terms of capacity to hold, it's not a the capacity basis. to hold. It's the storm. It's the storm event itself. So we look at okay. what, what we do is if you can imagine a V, and when a hundred-year storm event occurs, what the elevation of that storm water would be oh. in that V we then would add an additional foot of water on top of when you fill that V up or that channel up with water. That's, that's to give you just the, I'm, I'm trying to put it as simple as, as I could imagine it. And hopefully that thank image you. kind of resonates. Yeah. Thank so you, Mr. Savansky. Thank you, Ms. Thank Camerata. Thank you. Uh, Tom McHugh, I believe you have a question. Tom, yes. are you muted? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. I just, I just, you got to give me a chance to roll the mouse and turn it on. <laughs> um, okay, uh, getting back to the, the real issue at hand, uh, which is uh, number one, uh, recommend that the Board of Commissioners authorize the conditional letter. Um, in simplest terms for lay folks, um, what actually were, was the, in a nutshell, what actually was the difference in the new hydraulic analysis for this portion of the Tuckanee Creek Parkway. What changed? I'm just curious. From an analysis standpoint, Mr. McHugh, there, there is none. What we're doing is we're trying to expedite and move forward the DEP portion of the project that is north of our bridge or upstream from our bridge at 1122. That is what our model has not adjusted. It's still reflecting and showing the exact amount of rainfall. Nothing has changed in that sense. All right, so to make, um, help me to understand, the Board of Commissioners are asking to authorize a submission of this new CLOMR um, based on changes that occurred in the floodplain. Um, how does that jive with what you just said? So the conditions that we are doing our phase one portion of the project, which is strictly in Abington Township, is lowering the 100 year storm flood peak levels, let's say, and reducing that is not having an adverse effect to the properties. It's actually, in, it's positively impacting a number of properties within Abington, Cheltenham, and uh, Jenkintown uh, Borough. That is the reason why this proposal is in front of the Cheltenham Township. If it just strictly stayed in Abington, the benefits of it, we would not be having this discussion right now. But because it, the positive impacts of lowering the 100 year storm crossed over multiple municipalities, that's why we've been presenting to both Abington and Jenkintown Borough as well. Okay, that helps to clear it up. And just to make sure I understand, uh, this application involves changes that you're making at or above Jenkintown Station. And just to make sure that the Board of Commissioners is okay with what's going to happen and it's not going to have any detrimental effects either in the area of the station or downstream. Is that, is that, am I correct in saying that? That's and correct. That, that's a simple explanation of what's going on here. Um, uh, now, I'll, I always try to be brief, so I just want to say that um, what we're always super 
cautious about is um, when you, Dennis, when you use terms like uh, harden the infrastructure, uh, that to me actually means accelerate the water. This hardening generally means smoother surfaces and accelerates the water down to Elkins Park. And Elkins Park and those areas, that Shoemaker and all those, they really get crushed when, well, when the, the new, the big culvert was put in along Chelton Hills Drive. Uh, that, that just quadrupled the flow through there. And it, we went from a, uh, an 1855 detention basin on the uh, south side of the culvert to no detention basin whatsoever. And it caused a massive flooding downstream, especially in Elkins Park, right along High School Road. Um, so I'll end with this. We just, and this is for commissioners too, we have to be very careful um, that, you know, the normal tendency of Abington Township uh, is to build, 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 and then do flood relocation projects. And that just means you move the flood from Abington to Cheltenham. And uh, unfortunately, we're, we're the victims of that. Uh, Jagantown has done the same thing, spent a ton of money to accelerate the water into Cheltenham. So um, we, we have to be careful that, you know, um, heavy rain events, I've said this a few times, but I actually learned it from the engineers from the Army Corps. Um, Heavy rain events could be argued that they're an act of God, but flooding is always an act of man. Either we built where we shouldn't have built or we built too much up above and increased the accelerated stormwater runoff. So that's what we have to watch out for in everything we do. Uh, please don't channelize the Tookanee Creek, uh, especially where it runs along Glenside Avenue. I know you want to put a serpentine. Are you still planning on a serpentine going through the uh, the bird sanctuary lawn yeah. area, the reclaimed yeah. area? Yes, sir, thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you. I want to. That's our phase two, which is if there's approval this evening that we uh, can, I can begin to sit back down with the township manager and the township engineer and begin those discussions. We're sitting at sixty percent design. I would love to be back here in two months and re showing 60% design to this, to this uh, board and, and start having additional discussions of that, that work. And also maybe have some positive news with progression of the project interfacing with the DEP North and upstream of 1122. Thank you, Dennis. We will be watching uh, and um, hoping that it has a, a net benefit. Obviously the, the old Wanamaker pond, culvert <laughs> it's the one that you could walk under the rails and the ties uh, that that was a that was a terrible situation so this is a i can understand why you want to harden there for sure Mr. Okay, Rick, you know, i'll stop talking then i think we've demonstrated as a board a staff that uh, we're paying close attention surveilling this and making sure you know having gone through this probably the last four months we are both attending to the comments and asking um, additional oversight by SEPTA and, and by DEP, et cetera. So we're not about to, to make any concessions or compromises um, until we know that, that downstream is gonna be protected and upstream pr precautions are gonna be put into play. Are there any other, uh, is there any other public comment, uh, Allison? Uh, none that I can see. Okay, with that, I'm gonna again restate um, that what we'd be voting on, we'd recommend the Board of Commissioners authorize submission of a conditional letter of map revision, a CLOM or application package for the Federal Emergency Manage Agency, FEMA, to revise the annotated flood insurance rate map firm based on updated hydraulic analysis proportions of the Tokeny Creek and Bader Run. And I'll call that to question. All those in favor say aye. 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 And nay. Nay. Okay. And uh, five to two vote. Five to two. Uh, Commissioner uh, Sigmund if I if I may just make a comment. Please. Yeah, I, I just wanted to acknowledge the uh, efforts of um, 
uh, Mr. Stefanski and SEPTA to really move the needle on the benefits of the project to Sheltonham Township. Uh, the reason I voted nay, I just felt like the needle wasn't moved uh, far enough. So I just wanted to uh, put that out there uh, behind my vote. My vote. Thank you. And, and, and just for the record, um, do, ditto. I'm not going to vote for me. Same thing. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. I think it's important that uh, that we also explain sometimes the reasons why we take the actions or vote the way we do. Um, is there Mr. Any Chair. Other? Excuse me? Chair, Commissioner. Mr. Chair. Rappaport? Yes. Yeah, and again, with, with thanks to um, the commitments that SEPTA has been showing, um, but one that didn't come into play on this, but that needs to be reiterated, uh, is that we're also watching the um, condition of the historic train station. And a year ago, it was leaking in many places. We want to make sure we go on record to say that that's not an acceptable way to treat property, especially something that this community is invested in for the future. So um, we'd appreciate it if you would make sure that um, that message gets uh, relayed to um, your facilities folks and that that is taken care of if it hasn't already been completely watertight, uh, that that takes a constant look uh, so that it is not uh, demolition by neglect. Thank so you, Commissioner Rappaport. And I'd like to make a suggestion. Um, uh, Mr. Eisold, if you can, I think it would be important with Commissioner Rappaport's point to memorialize those concerns in a formal letter or, or recognition of the fact that even though we're making this uh, we're approving this and authorizing the moving forward. There are still other issues and some of those may not be necessarily in Mr. Stefanski's domain, but they relate to SEPTA, they relate to our entire transportation area. And I think we want to make sure that as we're asking, as, as we're being asked to, to do things on behalf of SEPTA, DEP, FEMA, that we're also making additional requests for them to be able to, to take on things that are in fact are clearly under their domain. So if you would, please make sure that that's be memorialized and shared to the appropriate parties, if not Mr. Savansky, to some of the other uh, SEPTA folks that we have a very productive dealings with, but these are things that are important to the board and in particular, thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Um, we'll close that matter and see, is there any other old business that anybody on the board wants to bring up? Mr. Chairman, I have one thing, if I may. Commissioner Arman? Please. Yes, th thank you. Um, it, it, it was it was mentioned in the discussion on, on the previous topic, uh, and uh, uh, for Mr. Fedorchek and and Ms. Elliott, um, I don't know if there are any updates on the Glenside DEP flood project, but um, I would ask at the very least uh, that uh, at a at an upcoming public works meeting that uh, that we be provided with a status as to what's going on with that project. I don't think we've um, heard from DEP since I think earlier this year. So um, with so essentially that's all I'm I'm all, all I'm looking for. I'm not looking if we don't have any status update. That's fine for now. But I would like to have one at a future meeting. We can do Thank that. You, Commissioner Arman. Uh, Thank anybody you. Anybody else? No other uh, old business. So I will close old business. Uh, we'll move into new business uh, item A is the introduction of the stormwater remediation initiative. And we're gonna take about hopefully uh, 15 or 20 minutes just to walk through what really is an important and, and related issue to many of the topics we've talked about tonight. We mentioned earlier in both highway and the park reports, the issues with uh, stormwater and flooding. You know, um, similar to the proactive efforts that this board took related to uh, the wastewater uh, situation or sewer system. Um, we took necessary action. This is a different matter, but the board and staff believe that we have um, we have many issues um, and options and obligations in owning, identifying, addressing, and implementing uh, creative solutions for our, uh, the problem that we have with stormwater remediation. So I wanted to take, the board wanted to take a couple minutes just to go through 
uh, we put together a brief PowerPoint um, that talks about, you know, how to frame the next, say, year and a half of activities that we're going to do related to this. So, uh, Allison, if you would, could you bring up that PowerPoint, please? Thank you. Um, so briefly, this is a stormwater and flood management, uh, really a roadmap to talk about how in, in the long run we're going to try and mitigate flooding. And again, it's related to so many of the things that we've discussed. Next. Um, extreme weather events really are outside our control. Both Cheltenham and this region experience frequent uh, seasonal weather events, which do a number of things. They result in flooding and storm drain backup or blockage. They contribute to residential, commercial, and also township property damage. And they really do harm to the in infrastructure, destroying trees and greenscape. And these events, not just on the, on the global side to the region, but they affect uh, all the property owners as well. They, they create physical damage. They cause us to either shut down or evacuate properties. We, we lose the use of those properties and there's loss of revenue and income in many levels. Thank you. Um, the impact of these weather events, well, homeowners, renters, and commercial property uh, owners frequently lack adequate property and flood insurance coverages. So that results in significant out-of-pocket expenses, uh, a lot of times uncovered damage claims, and frankly, there may be reduced uh, property valuations or people eventually either abandoning property or eventually selling below what should have been the market price. And it's an important impact given that we don't want these things to happen um, to the, the folks who have invested, whether homeowners, renters, or commercial property owners. The township spends a lot of time and money, resource, diverting those resources into what are situational remediation rather than prevention and future improvements. And again, as, we, as we've talked about in the past, the decisions we made with our sewer system, we're now thinking about what are the things that we need to do to prevent and mitigate these things before these events happen. Um, and many of you come to us, we hear uh, frequently, they, they come to the township hoping we are obligated to handle damage claims, which frankly we aren't. And others expect FEMA to buy up flooded properties, that's a very rare occurrence. So we need to be more proactive as a, as a township in doing things that are gonna uh, take these things out of to, to what Mr. McHugh talked about. Uh, rather than acts of God, we have to take on the acts of man and woman responsibility in these. Next. Here are the plain facts that impact you know our pro commercial properties or residential properties we do have an aging infrastructure with a long history of both wastewater and stormwater management challenges we took the action wastewater wise to replace interceptor a um, and we obviously completed to sell the system to aqua which eliminated some cost prohibitive obligations on the township those could have totaled as much as 80 to 100 million dollars of debt which we couldn't have afforded and potentially could have thrown the township into bankruptcy. But we're not in the same situation stormwater wise. We have a number of things that we need to look at to evaluate how we're gonna reduce some of these impacts. There's upstream developments where there's flooding downstream to property, some of what we've just talked about. There's the Army Corps of Engineer Basin project and there's the PADEP flood mitigation project just mentioned that are in the planning stages. There's stormwater runoff and flooding that adds to problems and costs. Um, in the recent flooding events, we saw accumulated debris from aging and diseased trees and greenery literally block or divert flow, which created additional flooding problems. There's mud and silt from soil displacement uh, displacement, which moves water in ways that we really aren't equipped to manage without being aware of. And frankly, there are individual unauthorized construction or personal flood mitigation efforts that actually contribute to problems by causing additional water to flow onto neighboring properties that we have to basically be aware of. And we have to ask people not to take those matters into their own hands. Next. 
So there are a series of ongoing efforts to mitigate stormwater impacts and flooding. Uh, first thing is Township Public Works, Emergency Management, Fire, Police, and Engineering Resources did respond to dangerous life-threatening situations. The July 6 event saw water rescues, submerged, vehicle, subver submerged vehicles, local flooding, but no fatalities or storm-related hospitalizations. And these same resources routinely inspect, monitor, and institute preventative measures by removing, clearing, issuing citations, or communicating and trying to ask property owners not to do things that are going to contribute. So there is an extensive investment in stormwater management facilities, pumping stations, levees, reconstruction, and point repairs that have benefited many areas, but they don't cover everything. Public works actions routinely reduce potential flooding, stormwater incursion, and damage through the maintenance activities that we've kind of talked about. Code enforcement can notify property owners when things haven't been properly done. And there may need to be interventions in, in conjunction by both the owners and township to improve some of the risks that are associated with these predictable severe weather events. Nick, okay. So what immediate and future fixes are available? Well, obviously public works and our township engineers have been and are surveying the vulnerable areas. They want to identify and assess the locations where we have a history and they continue to have a risk of flooding. At the same time, they're routinely, even before the storms and in anticipation of, of this week's storm, they were looking for blockages from accumulated or new debris at inlets, culverts, and at storm drains. They're routinely looking at the stream, ba stream banks for the risk of overflow or potential for flooding. Um, we're obviously, we're a township that responds to complaints and concerns, so we're listening to where we're hearing about and getting videos or getting texts and messages about some of those problem areas. And at the same time, we need to identify and prioritize where there may be projects that can improve the resiliency to be able to fight off those extreme weather events. All these can and will and do reduce the risks that come with extreme events, but they're not enough. And to that, and Cheltenham recognized that we require a systematic and comprehensive initiative to prioritize stormwater protection and management, leading to a stormwater management initiative, which I believe is music to the ears of many of you who have uh, both contributed your questions and concerns in the SEPTA, in the SEPTA discussions, in the uh, Army Corps discussions, in the DEP discussions, as well as just the individual events that have created some problems or issues for you or your neighbors individually. So we have initiated, um, and we're in the process of, of initiating, a stormwater impact fee feasibility study. Uh, step one of that was uh, after extensive information gathering, the staff and board initiated a, a request for proposal to identify the best consulting options for establishing a stormwater management utility. A Philadelphia-based uh, experienced resource, Arcadis, was selected out of eight competitive proposals to conduct the analysis and identify how the township can implement a stormwater management and usage authority. We've, we've approved it, we funded, um, but we have not yet started uh, that uh, feasibility study. Within that will be extensive community involvement in this initiative. Uh, a number probably anywhere from three to six public meetings will be held throughout the process to provide opportunities for property owners to comment and understand the analysis. We'll include residential, commercial, and institutional property owners appointed to a stormwater advisory committee that will help guide this analysis. The board, staff, and township technical advisors will also be involved in this discussion. And that will bring into this implementation somewhere around a 15-month commitment, which is what Arcadis and some of our uh, in-house folks think is going to require us to be able to get to a conclusion and implementation by, uh, by January of 2022. So the preliminary public activities are going to actually be starting probably early this fall and studies again are expected um, to take us through that period up until an implementation uh, in January 2022. Next. Um, 
it's envisioned that any fees are going to be proportionately imposed on properties with large and impervious surfaces that contribute to flooding and stormwater problems. And frankly, many of those are ex tax exempt properties such as colleges, hospitals, private schools, and religious institutions with large amounts of impervious surfaces. They contribute to significant water runoff and creek or stream overflow. And frankly, as part of this process, they would be expected to pay their fair share of both the operating and the capital cost, thereby reducing the burden on our current taxpayers who right now subsidize many of those stormwater and flooding activities. In probability, residential properties could be assessed an equivalent residential unit, an ERU fee, based on the typical volume of uh, impervious surfaces on an average property, just as an information purpose, and we, we're not fixed on any of this, but in 40 Pennsylvania municipalities that have already instituted stormwater management fees on average, residential properties paid modest quarterly fees, a $22 on average is their contribution to mitigating flooding and improving water quality, what needs to be stated here is if those in fact are fees directly um, assessed on property owners and we already have in our budgets um, a, a percentage of stormwater management, stormwater remediation fees, there's obviously going to be a trade-off. So there may be reductions on certain line items in the, in the, um, in the current budgets to cover off and have a specific number associated with residences yet, that's all to be determined. But in contrast, those properties that are sizable, that are tax exempt, will have a specific calculation on their imperfect, impervious surfaces that will require payments. And in some of those uh, Pennsylvania municipalities, up to six figures uh, of obligations based on their impact contribution, and that's a negative contribution, on stormwater management and flooding remediation that needs to be instituted. Next. So the expected outcomes over this, say, next 15-month period, there's a couple of things. These severe weather events have the potential to create havoc. And to the comment that Mr. McHugh made, we have to, from our standpoint, have township-wide improvements and preventative measures that have the probability to diminish all but these most extreme impacts on areas that already are predictably affected and on areas where we know we can do better. Those predictable locations, either in proximity to waterways or with some history of flooding, are identifiable. So we need uh, both sound engineering and maintenance that can contribute to solutions that are going to be implemented. And as part of that, we need to, to bring in, you know, the basin solutions from the Army Corps and DEP projects that are going to be factored into these policies and contribute significant funding. Generally, properties contributing to local flooding and water quality have larger impervious surface. But again, uh, the nonprofits, because they avoid paying real estate taxes, it's an inequity that has to be addressed via a stormwater rem remediation initiative to establish adequate funding and what we consider fair ownership of those obligations, taking those off of the township residents and putting them on those that contribute significant problems, but currently aren't uh, contributing the funds to support that. Community initiatives of this nature are gonna address short and long-term problems to limit costly damage to property and infrastructure, increase the resiliency of stormwater and other infrastructure to uh, minimize damages and where we lose use of property or infrastructure during some of these events. So what we wanted to do was set the stage for some of these upcoming activities um, with the community, with, it, uh, with, with, uh, with, with our um, selected, uh, selected expert with the township staff, et cetera, to start to minimize um, and to be able to prevent many of these incidents that are, uh, that are disturbing us, but not lose the control of our system. In fact, take greater control, which is a very different approach than what we found ourselves in with our uh, wastewater management system. So we wanted to start the process 
We know that it's something that um, we have an obligation to. And frankly, um, we've been doing many other things. And this was the next uh, in line of priorities that this, uh, this board has aggressively wanted to take control of. So we hope this provides not just a lot of questions, but a sense of both reassurance and potential control in some of these situations that have felt to some of you somewhat out of control. So I believe that's, is that the last slide? Uh, yeah, the last slide, Allison, you might want to just say, so the information and updates about this study are going to be found on the website, um, on the hot topics page under stormwater impact fee, et cetera. We're not at the impact fee stage, but what we're doing is, is basically beginning the process of both education and, and in engagement with, with both the property owners, um, with staff and, and with the community to be able to make this, uh, you know, a productive and collaborative effort. So I think it's really important. And again, I'll ask um, some of the board members to contribute some thoughts, et cetera. And then we can open it up briefly because I've reached to Commissioner Pransky's concerns, my hour and a half. So I want to make sure that we leave time for some of the other important ma matters. But if we can, um, some input. Hour and a half? I thought that was one hour. I, I'm sorry, I did. I, I thought you said 90 minutes. It was my hearing. Yeah, okay. I'll give you 30 of mine. Right. So a contribution from both uh, board members as well as staff. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport. Thanks. I'll just add that even though we uh, started talking about moving in this direction probably two or three years ago, um, I wanted the record to show also that this turned out to be one of the top recommendations from PFM during our um, strategic management uh, study and report that they put out. So even if we hadn't already been going in this direction, it was uh, uh, a recommendation from our outside consultants uh, that this is the way to, to handle all uh, these challenges. Thank you, Commissioner. Go ahead. Um, I would like to just uh, add to what Ann was saying and also uh, so that it's clear to the community, uh, while this discussion started a couple of years ago and PFM has recommended it, this is also just the beginning of a, of a uh, as uh, Commissioner Sigmund Phelps, I think, said, a fifth, perhaps a 15-month process before anything would uh, actually uh, be initiated. Uh, so this process, it's, it's quite a formalized process in that uh, formalized, and we're going to be doing it with lots of communication and lots of transparency, lots of input from the community. And that community is not only going to include our residential taxpayers, but our nonprofits in the area and the commercial properties in the area. Um, and part of that process will be a determining uh, uh, the rate structure. And we have an outside consultant uh, that has been engaged to help us with that but there will be lots of opportunities for community input on this. Thank you, Thank Commissioner you. Norris. So, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Holland? Yep, yeah, really quickly, just, you know, I, um, you know, I'm excited about this initiative. Um, you know, we've been talking about it for a while and, you know, as we, you know, move forward and we try to, you know, be creative, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a new idea, it's been done elsewhere, but, you know, new to us and, you know, innovative to us here, you know, I think these are the types of, of solutions that we need to, you know, conceptualize and then put in place, take action on that are going to continue to drive and enhance the, uh, the quality of life within the township. So, you know, I applaud the board for moving forward with, uh, with a recommendation and, you know, look forward to uh, seeing the implementation. Thank you. Any other board members? Okay, is there anybody from staff that would like to contribute a thought or two? I think staff has stopped thinking for the night. <laughs> They're overwhelmed by how much work this is gonna add for them as well. Um, okay, well, I, we'll open it up to some brief community input. So Allison, do we have anybody who's raising their hands or have we basically baffled them to a degree that they need more time? 
looks like staff and uh, public do not have comments. Oh no, uh, Ms. Camarota. I just want to thank the board for taking this on. It looks like it's pretty comprehensive at this point. Yeah, I know you put a lot of work into it. And thank you for acknowledging our concerns. You're welcome. And more important than your concerns is we're soliciting involvement so that we have all the, all the potential impacted as well as contributing parties involved. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Um, McHugh? Um, Tom, hi. Hang on for you for one second. Oh, this is going to be a, a very important step for the township moving forward, um, as far as dealing with floods, dealing with the impact as it has on our budgets. Um, I'm 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 heartened by the, the positive response uh, from at least Teresa, um, and hopefully the rest of the public. But um, as we move forward, we're looking forward to that continued input because this is a very, very important initiative. And Tom, I relinquish it to you now. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I just, some quick points to put, put a little different perspective on it. I like, you know, it's great that you have done this. It's great that you've done this, um, but just, to address a few things and look at it from the way I look at it. Um, the original, the opening of the presentation is to say that it's an out of control situation, uh, that some people lack insurance and I don't care to have us as a township thinking of ourselves as victims. Um, that's, I think a wrong approach aging infrastructure. Well, the backbone of our stormwater management is millions of years old. It's our creeks and tributaries. Um, so if we, you know, we want, that. we like the old original uh, stormwater management system that came with the township when we first, the humans first got here. Um, stormwater problem is not like the sewer, obviously not. It's really not. Um, uh, you know, the creeks are open to the air and, you know, it's a totally different situation. Uh, I'll be quick. Uh, the, the we, we need to think of this not as how can Cheltenham Township deal with this problem and how can we raise money to help us deal with this problem. We need to think outside the township. We are part of a watershed. One third of Amington drains through Cheltenham. All of Jenkintown drains through Cheltenham. So if we have to get help from the state to get, the state's gonna have to administer this all over the, every part of the state where you need some type of regional authority, not just us. Because, yes, we can't control, you know, even if we had an authority, we cannot control what Abington does or what Jenkintown does without the state or the federal. I'd say the state. Um, that's it. I, I'm just, I'm, I want to, I want, you know, I think of Chelsea Township as being the place to live. We're the inner ring. We, you know, we're better off than sprawling suburbia. We're closer to the cultural center of this entire metropolitan area. I like that. We've got a lot of classic homes, beautiful neighborhoods, beautiful parks, and I don't want us to think of ourselves as victims. Thank you. And Tom, to that comment, I hope that wasn't the takeaway by the majority, because that's not the point. I think the, the point that we're saying is there are things that we can do. There are interventions. They're preventative measures. They're things that we can do based on the history of flooding, based on stormwater incursion, et cetera. And frankly, um, we don't want to be having to um, just let the <clears throat> things be attributed to, um, to severe storm events. If there are things that we can do in, in the previous part of public works, we did talk about some of the different interventions and things that are they're planned out. So we want to piggyback on 
those things with <clears throat> Army Corps, with DEP, with SEPTA, but there's also other things that we can actively do to engage some of the um, properties in the community that are contributing the highest amount of uncontrolled flow and, and creating problems that, that in fact could be managed with a higher degree, both of participation and taking on some of the, the localized remediation that those properties with so much impervious surface could in fact do things to mitigate the amount of water that they're contributing to the creeks and the waterways. That's the real challenge. And right now they're not doing those things and we have to have some means to be able to convince them that that's part of their obligation, being part of this wonderful community, taking advantage of all the things and all the, the population that in fact contributes to their day in day out functioning. So I think thanks for the thumbs up because I think that's a big part of what we want to do. So. Um, anybody, are there any other comments or questions? Yes, Mr. Baker. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, uh, Derek Baker from Elkins Avenue. Um, first, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld, Manager Fedoric, Mr. Kluhl, Mr. Coyle, uh, for coming out meeting with us uh, and for the uh, significant steps that were taken over the last uh, two, uh, four days, um, uh, certainly with Mr. Kluhl and Mr. Coyle. So thank you very much for all that. Uh, I wanted to add my comments to those that Commissioner Zygmuntfeld made at the outset of the meeting. Um, I have two uh, comments to make with respect to this uh, part of the presentation. The first is, um, as I said to Mr. Or Commissioner Zygmuntfeld when we first met, I, I know a lot of the board members are uh, are relatively new uh i.e within the last uh seven to seven plus or seven since years um but this is an issue that probably should have been taken up well before now and i'm glad it's being taken up so thank you for that and thank you for the board's leadership on that um i certainly would would welcome an opportunity to participate in any way that you think i can be helpful um secondly i would ask uh if the powerpoint that was just presented is going to be posted on the website and made available. Sure. Yes, it'll be uh, posted on the page uh, that was listed at the end of the presentation. Do we have other comments? Mitch, could I make a couple comments, please? Please, please. Yeah, as a, obviously as a civil engineer involved for over 35 years with the municipalities, um, I've seen all kinds of stormwater issues and problems, and this is a, uh, a, a very bold initiative, and I think it's an exciting initiative for, for Cheltenham. Um, Miss Pally's, unfortunately, uh, such as Cheltenham, that developed uh, you know, years ago, has sort of been on the reactive uh, phase as opposed to the active phase as they deal with, deal with stormwater. Um, as you may know, the, the Stormwater Management Act didn't come into play until uh, the late 1970s, um, at which most of, uh, or many parts of, uh, developed communities have been you know, already fully developed. So you're sort of trying to play catch up a little bit and try to uh, slow down water that uh, for years was sort of ignored uh, by, uh, by laws, by government and so forth. So uh, from that standpoint, um, again, I think it's a, it's a bold and exciting uh, chapter here. And I think, uh, I think uh, Cheltenham, uh, you know, it's good that you're getting involved in this. And uh, I think it's gonna be uh, a positive benefit. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a, a, a hard process to put in place, but I think once in place, it's going to make a lot of difference to the, uh, to the community of, uh, of Cheltenham. Thank you, Mr. Eisel. Uh, any other comments either from the board, from uh, staff, or if there are the other uh, community comments? We good? Okay, uh, close discussion and, and uh, Allison, thank you and your staff so much for the work that you put in to help make uh, the presentation actually uh, palatable and, and, and able to get through within 15 minutes. Um, that closes new business. Uh, number six, Citizens Forum. Do we have any comments uh, from citizens who haven't been heard so far tonight? Any, any hands being raised? Okay, well, uh, yes, I'm, Mr. Hislop, sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Hislop? No, too late. Sorry. <clears throat> so I have a quick one. And um, just
just want to talk about trash, different subject. So previously the township has sent unscheduled trash pickup when there's been weather issues, when basements have been assaulted. Uh, mine was indirectly assaulted by weather. I'll leave it at that. I have mostly cardboard newspaper recyclables, which are not able to be recycled. Uh, they are in my driveway. Uh, they will be there for Monday. However, um, without sending a special truck, you know, we didn't really have flooding on this block. No, nobody that I know of in the house. It was in the yards. It was in the street. So if you have a crew, if you have a dump truck, otherwise, if you want to wait till Monday, that's fine. But it's going to be a lot. Well, you know, it's not that much. It's it's five minutes. So I just offer that and uh, ask um, whichever works for you. Uh, does, is there a need for comment from uh, from our public works director on this? No. Okay. okay. Okay, Mr. Hislop, we'll take it. You, you've made your concern public, uh, and, and it's been noted. Uh, are, are there any other com citizens forum comments? Thank you. You're welcome. I believe uh, that would be it. So I'll close the citizen forum, and I will move for adjournment. All those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.